KHLJ, 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Georgia, Foxy, 97.5 FM. Victorious Women Empowerment International presents Mother Daughter Backyard Sneaker Brunch, Paint Party Edition, on May 13th from 11 o'clock a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. There will be a 360 photo booth, food, games, and prizes. General tickets are $25. Vendor fee, $25 without brunch and painting, $50 with brunch and painting. The location for this event is 2201 Forest Lane in Blackshear, Georgia. Register at www.eventbrite.com. Command your morning devotion and prayer live at 5 o'clock a.m. Monday through Friday at WHLJ 97.5 FM in Valdosta and Moultrie, Georgia. Also on Facebook Live on Mondays. You can also tune in by going to www.foxy97.com or call in 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. Evangelist Renee Sellers is your host. everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where my pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III. My apostle is Apostle Terry Wings and his wife, my pastor, Pastor Shade Wings. And we're live this morning at 5 a.m. I'm thinking I'm on and I'm muted, but we're thankful for another day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to uh, pick up where we left off yesterday, pick up a little bit where we left off introducing some terms that are relative to our salvation. I pray that you took good notes yesterday. We're going to go back to John chapter 3, verses 16, and we're going to add verse 18 this morning because some feel that you will not know whether or not you're saved until you get to heaven. Well, I would uh, not want to play with it. I thank God that he has provided a way that we can be sure. And can can somebody say Jesus is that way? He has provided a way that we can be sure. Somebody write this down if you're taking notes and put it in big, bold letters in your notepad. Listen, put it in big, bold letters on your post-it note. Write this down if you're taking notes. Notes. God has provided a way and Jesus is that way. Uh, he has provided the way, a way for you and I to be saved. And somebody say, Jesus is that way. He has provided a way for you and I to be rescued from the power of sin and death. Somebody say, Jesus is that way. Somebody say, he has provided a way for us to be rescued from, from, from God's wrath. Jesus is that way. God has provided a way for us to be rescued from final judgment or eternity in the lake of fire. Somebody say, Jesus is is that way. No matter what or who else you bow down to, Jesus is the way to eternal life. Jesus is the way to eternal life. So we're going to pick up and, and, and try to wrap up uh, with a part two from where we left off on yesterday, discussing some terms that are relative to our salvation. But we're going to open up this morning, if she can, with a word of prayer by Pastor Gloria Moore. Right. Woman of God, open us up with a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we bless you today. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. We come thanking you, Lord God, for all your blessings, thanking you for all your benefits that you daily load us with. Thank you, God, for the good and the bad. Thank you for the rough and the tough. If we never had a problem, we would not know that you could solve them. But we bless you today, God, for you are the same God that brought us out the last time. We come today thanking you, Lord God, 
for loving us so much that you gave your only begotten son to die on the cross that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you today. Thank you, God, for looking beyond our faults and seeing our need. Thank you for waking us up this morning with you on our minds. We thank you, God, for Upper Room Ministries. Thank you for Command Your Morning. Thank you for Pastor Sellers, Lord God. Bless him and his family now, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for Dr. Renee Sellers. We pray, God, that you will use her in a great and mighty way, Father. Lord God, we pray that the words of her mouth, the meditation of her heart, will be acceptable in thy sight. Lord God, bless her now in the name of Jesus. Bless all the ministries that are represented on this call, all your listeners and the listening audience, Lord God. We lift up WHLJ this morning. We pray blessings upon this station. Use them, Lord God, for your glory. Father, in Jesus' name, we will continue to give you praise, glory, and honor for you are an awesome God. You're good all the time, and all the time you are good. You're our protection and our protector. And, Lord God, we look unto Jesus today, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. As we prepare, God, to hear what has been prepared for us, help us to hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Father, we dedicate and we uh, commit this broadcast into your hands. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, Pastor Gloria Moright. We're going to look at John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18 uh, in the Amplified Version this morning. Uh, Remember, we talked about yesterday that uh, when we talk about the word saved, that word saved means to rescue. That word uh, saved means to rescue. Let's look at that word again in John chapter 3. It's, it's in verse 17. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recite this from what's familiar to everybody, John 3, 16, uh, in the uh, uh, King James, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We're adding verse 18 this morning, which says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, of God. Let's look at this word saved once again in Greek. My subject this morning is Jesus is the way. Simple subject. Jesus is the way. And and that word save means to save, rescue, to preserve, safe and unharmed. So what Jesus did at the cross and what the Lord did through Jesus, as I said on yesterday, God, listen, because of his love for us, took action to rescue us. Somebody needs to write that down. Because of his great love for us, he took action to rescue us. Because of his great, and let's make it personal, because of God's great love for me, he took action to rescue me. I need you to make this a Facebook post. I need you to make this an Instagram post. I need you to go to TikTok and let the world know because I seem to have a lot of responses from TikTok on my post. I need you to go to YouTube and make a video, a little video, a YouTube short and begin to declare to the world that because of God's great love for me, he took action, ladies and gentlemen. And ladies and gentlemen, he took action for you when you were out on the street slanging dope. He took action for you when you were out on the street selling your body. He took action for you, ladies and gentlemen, while you were still sleeping and, 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 and living in sin. He took act- Watch this now. Those that are in sin right now, can somebody tell them Jesus, God, took 
took action for you when he gave his only begotten son to rescue you, ladies and gentlemen, to rescue from sin, to rescue from God's wrath, to rescue you from eternal separation from God. Somebody tell your neighbor who wouldn't serve a God like that. Because of God's great love for us, he took action to rescue us. Ah to rescue us. Somebody ought to say thank God for rescuing me because everything God did, it was about us. Everything he is doing, somebody say, it's about us. I need somebody to be encouraged this morning that you may not, oh, God, feel that people are not thinking about you. You may feel that people are not considerate of you. You may think that, that people have a, don't have you on their mind, but somebody needs to be encouraged on this on this Think About It Thursday that when other people don't have you on their mind, can somebody say God has you on his? Can somebody shout amen and say Jesus is the way? When you feel like like other people don't have you on their mind, be encouraged that God has you on his. Can somebody say thank God for Jesus this morning, that when nobody else is thinking about me, he he is. As a matter of fact, God was thinking about you before your mom and daddy was thinking about each other, because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Before you were even thought about, God was thinking about you. And so let's talk about this this morning. Let's do part two this morning, John chapter 3 and verse 16. Somebody say, thank God for rescuing me. Jesus is the way because of God's great love for me. He took action to rescue me. He took action to rescue me. Jesus is the, the, the vessel that he utilized to rescue us. So let's look at it in the Amplified now. Look at it in the Amplified. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world uh, that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in. And here's what I, I use to talk about what it means to believe in. It's not just lip service saying, I believe in Jesus because I heard about him in Sunday school. It's not just lip service saying, I believe in Jesus because I go to church every Sunday. Uh, it's not just lip service saying, I believe in Jesus because somebody told me that he exists. This believe in, whoever believes in, is one who trusts in, clings to, and relies on him. Come on, somebody. And, and, and most overall relies on him for salvation. One who believes in, trusts in, clings to. And one thing, let me pause for a moment. One thing my mother-in-law said to me the Sunday before she passed away, she was watching televangelists, and, and I love to watch ministries on television. I don't know the context of what she meant when she said, a lot of these preachers are preaching, trying to convince people to go to heaven, but she said they're not preaching right. I don't know what she meant by that, but all. But what I want to share this morning, and this is not just for others, but it's for me and anybody that preaches the God that preaches, because the problem is, and maybe this is what she meant. Not everyone is preaching the good news. Not everyone is preaching the gospel. Not everyone is pointing people to Jesus. And so, what what we what the Bible does, the God sent His Son for us. Scripture points us to him. God points us to him as our answer for abundant life and eternal life. And so whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish, shall not perish, shall not perish, shall not come to destruction or be lost. When you rely on, cling to, and trust in Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Trust in him to save you. Not not Buddha, ladies and gentlemen. How many times I want, I want my nail shop people to understand this, that I understand that you're praying to an, a statue, but, but the only one who can save you is our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, and so I want to encourage somebody this morning that when you go get your nails done and you have the opportunity, spark a conversation about Jesus. Do you even know whether or not your nail tech is saved? 
Do you know whether or not your, your hairstylist is saved? Have you shared the gospel while you sat in their chair? Do, do you know whether or not your barber is saved? Have you shared the gospel while you sit in that chair and they have you looking good for today? But are you helping to prepare them for eternity? Oh, God, do you know whether or not your waitress that's in the restaurant that you eat at every Sunday after church, do you share the message that was shared? with you by your pastor with the waitress that serves you in the afternoon watch this do you serve them as they serve you uh, uh, do you serve them as they serve you Sunday afternoon should not be the worst time for those who serve tables Sunday afternoon should be a time where the ladies that have to work on Sunday or the men that have to work on Sunday can still get a word because those that got a word came in and shared the word that they got are you making sure that those that serve you that you're serving them Ah, that you're serving them a good meal after they've served you that ribeye. Come on. You're serving them a good meal by sharing the gospel after they've served you, ladies and gentlemen, that grilled salmon. The Bible says in John 3 and 16 of the Amplified, listen, those who believe in, whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish, come to destruction, shall not be lost, but have eternal or everlasting life. Somebody say life is short, eternity is long, live like it. Life is short, eternity is long, live like it. Eternal, indeterminate as a duration. Eternal or everlasting. Come on, somebody. Eternity is long, live like it. For God did not send the Son into the world in order to judge. And this word judged in the amplify judge rather in the amplify is outlined as to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence on. He did not do that. If you go down and we and I had to add verse number eighteen to tell you where this judgment begins, where this happens. God did not send his son to do that. God did not send his son into the world in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence on the world, but that the world through him might be saved in the, in the King James or find salvation and be made safe in the Amplified and sound through him. In other words, he did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be rescued. Uh, that the world through him might be rescued from eternal judgment, from God's wrath, ladies and gentlemen, from eternal separation from God. I want somebody to understand that whoever believes in him is rescued from eternal judgment. Jesus did that, ladies and gentlemen. That statue is going to perish. That big statue that Dr. Miles Monroe said he saw thousands of people praying around as he visited another country for, for ministry, as they were driving down the highway, he saw thousands of people praying around a statue that one day is going to crumble. That statue is one day going to crumble. But somebody needs to be encouraged that even though Jesus died, can somebody tell your neighbor he rose again and is alive today? And so he who believes in him, uh, he who believes in him, verse 18, who clings to, trust in, relies on him, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For him there is no rejection, no condemnation. Condemnation. He incurs no damnation. But <laughs> I don't I listen. But and I and I laugh because I love the word, not because I love love it when people choose to spend eternity separated from God. Hell was created for the devil and his angels, but people who choose to reject Jesus are choosing to spend eternity separated from him. That, that's not something God desires. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that he has no desire that any man should perish, 
but that all come to repentance. So that wasn't that's not that's not God's desire. So we can't can't you know people will ask you know why would a loving God do something to people? Why we, listen? I'm a good person. Uh, uh, there's a lot of good people who don't believe. That there are a lot of good people who have rejected the gospel. They're doing great things. You know, they're good people. They're, they're some of the kindest people I know, ladies and gentlemen, don't know Jesus. But they're good people. And so he who believes in him, who clings to trust in, as a matter of fact, let me pause for a moment. I know I, one of the nicest people I, I, I know or knew before they died, I never would have thought what happened to this person would have happened. This was a nice person, a good person, uh, a very mild-mannered person, very soft-spoken, didn't talk too much. But on their deathbed, they were presented with an opportunity to give their life to Jesus on their deathbed, and they rejected the opportunity by saying, I don't want to have anything to do with your Jesus. A nice person good person, mild-mannered, very humble, but on their deathbed was given the opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord, to be given the opportunity to accept Jesus before they took their last breath, and they rejected the opportunity by saying, I don't want to have anything with your Jesus. Good people still go to hell. Good people, there's going to be a lot of good people eternally separated from God. Death in the Bible always means separation. And so he who believes in him, who clings to him, still on verse 18, who clings to, trust in, relies on him, is not just. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For him there is no rejection, no condemnation. He incurs no damnation. But he who does not believe, cling to, rely on and trust in him is judged already so god did not send his son into the world to condemn or judge the world those who don't believe are judged already those who don't believe are judged already he has already been convicted and has already received his sentence because he has not believed in and trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Let me say that again. He is condemned. This is from the Amplified, from BibleGateway.com. He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ's name. So so Jesus didn't come to condemn. That unbeliever is condemned already. So let's talk about our salvation. Let's go back to verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, rescued from wrath, rescued from final judgment. So let's continue talking about those rescuing terms, those terms that are relative to our salvation. We talked about adoption yesterday. We talked about atonement. We talked about conversion. We talked about faith towards God. We talked about justification, ladies and gentlemen. We talked a little bit about propitiation. We're going to deal with it again. So let's talk about this morning what it means for our body to be glorified. What is glorification? Glorification is going to occur when we receive our resurrected body. First Thessalonians chapter 4 says, When the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ will rise first. Those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to receive our resurrected body in eternity. We will spend forever and ever. Amen. The old body, ladies and gentlemen, listen, you're going to receive a new resurrected body. There will be some similarities between this body and your glorified body. Let's go to John 21 and 4 for an example. Jesus' resurrection is a very good example of of our (laughs) resurrected body. John 21 and 4. Matter of fact, I'm just going to look at John 21. 
Amplify. It says, first of all, this is after the resurrection, and it says, morning was already breaking when Jesus, after the resurrection, came to the beach and stood there. However, the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. After the resurrection, but before his ascension, the disciples saw him on the beach, already breaking. It says morning was already breaking. That's significant for why they did not recognize that it was Jesus. Daybreak, it was daybreak when Jesus came to the beach and stood there. The disciples did not know it was Jesus. Daybreak, daybreak is very significant. Early in the morning, the King James says, is, is what it says in the King James, they did not recognize him at first because it was only daybreak. And they were still a good distance away from him, somebody. But John chapter 21 and 7 tells us, that the disciple that Jesus loved, who is John, the disciple that Jesus loved, it says, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Can somebody shout amen? Not only did they see him after the resurrection, but they recognized him when they got close enough to see who he was. It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, Simon, listen, listen, got excited. He, John, the disciple, disciple that Jesus loved. Jesus stood on the shore after he rose, and the disciples recognized who he was, ladies and gentlemen. So thereby, there will be some similarities between this mortal body and this resurrected body. Somebody tell your neighbor, listen, listen, those who died in Christ, you'll see them again. You'll see them again. And, and, then, and then the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, this glorification, we're still on glorification, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 through 44. This is the hope that believers have for those who died in Christ. This is the hope that believers have for those family members who, who died and we knew they knew Jesus. This is hope for you. I'm preparing uh, 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 my next message, Your Future is bright. Come on, somebody. You, you, you're, when you're saved and you're born again, can somebody say, my future is real bright. I, it doesn't matter what's happening. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. It doesn't matter what's happening at the moment. When you know Jesus, somebody declare, my future is bright. Listen, it doesn't matter what's going on in politics. Uh, listen, I got to deal with it because I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. My future is bright. It, it, I know that we're dealing with a transition for my mother-in-law, but somebody say her future, and because I believe my future is bright. Can somebody tell your neighbor that Jesus, oh God, is the answer, and our future is bright when we believe. The, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 through 44, but someone will ask, how are the dead raised? Because in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul has to deal with the mindset that some do not believe in the resurrection. But someone would ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives, it, he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and star differs from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that was sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. 
It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Overall, ladies and gentlemen, a dead natural body will be raised an eternal spiritual body. Our resurrected body will be clothed in immortality. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 53, 54, NIV, for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with the immorta- with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with, the, with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Can somebody tell your neighbor on last Friday at 11 a.m., death was disappointed? Oh, God, somebody tell your neighbor that your loved one who died in Christ, death is disappointed because, ladies and gentlemen, oh, God, pain, oh, God, is no longer an issue. Sickness is no longer an issue. Cancer is no longer an issue in that resurrected body. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to deal with those issues that you dealt with on this side. That body is going to be raised incorruptible. No more sickness, no more pain in that body, no more cancer in that body. Every kind of suffering and sickness and disease, can somebody tell your neighbor it will be gone? I need you to be reminded once again, our future is bright. The believer's future is bright. Woman of God, your future is bright. Man of God, your future is bright. Jesus is the way. Ladies and gentlemen, when you choose Jesus, you are making a decision that you can declare, my future is bright. Let's take a quick break for Station ID and Jesus is the way. We're live at 5 on WHLJ talking about Jesus is the way because of God's great love for us. He took action to rescue us. Our future, the future for the believer is bright, and Jesus is the way. We're live at 5 on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can also join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com, and you can also join us on the conference call at 267-807-9611, access code, Two six six five nine zero two six six five nine zero. Let's go to First John two and two. Let's talk about propitiation. First John two and two. Hallelujah! Somebody say Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. I'm gonna read it from the uh, Amplified, and he. Jesus, that same Jesus himself, is the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. Somebody needs to be reminded that Jesus paid it all. That word propitiation overall means satisfaction. It means that Jesus' atoning sacrifice is death satisfied the righteousness of God. In other words, in terms of a complete sacrifice for the sins of all men. It's been, it's been satisfied. It was satisfied through Jesus. Our righteousness was satisfied. What, what God, the, God's righteousness in us was satisfied in him. Because remember last week, I said our righteousness is as filthy rags. The, the meaning of filthy rags is, is a, a, a dirty Woman's dirty pad. It sounds filthy, but that's what it means. Our righteousness is as a filthy rag that a woman wears during her menstrual cycle. And so that's just how nasty or or, or how our own way of doing, because our way, the Bible says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. But the Bible also lets us know that Jesus is the way, and his way leads to eternal life. So he not only It's not only his way, but he is the way. Come on, somebody. He's the answer to the sin problem, ladies and gentlemen. That he, his death satisfied 
the righteousness of God in terms of a complete sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. We don't need anything else. Jesus already did it. That's, that's propitiation. And then there's re- reconciliation. We're dealing with terminology relative to our salvation. Reconciliation. We were once separated from God, and there are still people who are separated from God by sin, but Jesus paid it all so that you can be free from sin and free from the consequence and the, of sin. Reconciliation, once separated from God by sin, we have access now through the death of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died, the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom, no longer making it necessary or, or requiring that the priest make an atonement for us. Watch this. No longer requiring that the priest make an atonement for us. One thing propitiation did, it satisfied that. You, you have access to God now, ladies and gentlemen, because of Jesus is the way. You have access to God. It satisfied that Old Testament requirement. Listen, for the priest to go before, listen, go before God on our behalf to atone. Jesus, it, listen, satisfied that, ladies and gentlemen. He is the, uh, the atoning sacrifice. And But reconciliation, we were separated from God, but now we have access to God through the death of Jesus Christ. You can go before him, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Romans 5.10 NIV, for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we, shall we be saved through his life? Since we were, for a while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Let me share a little bit. Paul, if the death of God's son made us reconciled to God, then how much more will we be saved by his life? Pastor Tony Evans says the death of Jesus reconciled us back to God, but Jesus didn't stay dead. I need somebody to write that down and quote Pastor Tony Evans. The death of Jesus reconciled us to God, but Jesus did not stay dead. Ladies and gentlemen, we believers know that he is still alive. Some people say he's just a a fairy tale. Some people say he was just a prophet. Some people feel like he died and he did not rise up. But ladies and gentlemen, we as believers know that he is not dead. He is still alive. He is interceding for us right now in order to give us victory over the power of sin and the consequences of sin. This This is why we can say and we can believe that we are victorious. We have the victory over sin, death, and the consequences of sin. This is why I wear the T-shirt, I am victorious. This is, listen, I thank God because every time I get students and and, and, and we have orientation at Victorious Living Bible Institute, they keep sticking a pen in the word victorious. My daughter even said it's something about victorious. One of my former students said, there's something about victorious. Pastor Sellers asked me, where did you get the name? I said, God gave it to me because we are victorious. We have the victory over sin. We have the victory over death. We have the victory over eternal final judgment, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody said, those who believe, listen, get the t-shirt. I am victorious, ladies and gentlemen. You are victorious because what Jesus did. And this is one thing I want to share that Pastor Tony Evans says. He says, many bel- he says, think about it. If Jesus could take you from hell to heaven by dying, what he can do for you by living is even more exciting. Many believers who have accepted the saving death of Christ have yet to understand and access the saving life of Christ, which gives us victory in history. So the the saving life of Christ, not only his death, but his resurrection. Come on, somebody. And so that's a a, a reconciliation. Jesus, listen, death, listen, we were reconciled to him through his death. How much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? And then there's regeneration. 
Regeneration denotes the act whereby spiritually dead people are made alive through salvation. This word is, is used in Titus 3 and 5. But the concept is taught in John 3 where it says born from above and 1 Peter 1 where it talks about being born again. Hmm. Regeneration denotes the act whereby spiritually dead people are made alive through salvation. And then we talk about repentance a lot. And we know repentance is a change of mind. And, and repentance, and when our mind is changed, so is our behavior. It's not just an emotion. While emotion often comes when people truly repent before God, people do cry. They do uh, 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 have remorse for their sin. Yes, emotion often comes, but it's not an emotion. Repentance is a decision. It is a decision. And I don't know about you, but I thank God because I decided to follow Jesus. My future is bright. There's also a term that we mentioned briefly called sanctification, but we're going to pause right there for today. We talked yesterday, and we reiterate this because people need to be reminded that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Well, let me go back real quick. Sanctification involves three aspects. We are sanctified at the moment that we are converted and declared legally holy before God. Read 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. At this present time, we are being sanctified. And the word sanctified means to be set apart as we are being transformed into the image of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. In the future, we will be completely sanctified as we enter the presence of the Lord. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. (laughs) Jesus, thank you. Somebody say, my future is bright. So the Bible lets us know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you're still in the world, you're still uh, living in sin, then you're not by yourself. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our sins. Separate us from God. It, 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 what happened to Adam, the woman, and the man in the garden? Our sin separate us from God. Our sin, as did theirs, is what brings shame and guilt. But Jesus came so that you can no, no longer have to live your life with shame and guilt. Jesus died and rose again so you no longer have to live your life in shame and guilt. But the only way, ladies and gentlemen, is to give your life to Jesus. The only way to be saved from eternal judgment, and we talked the other week about those who will be hurled, the unbelievers will be hurled into the lake of fire. That word hurled means to be thrown by force into the lake of fire. You don't want that. There are people that have died without knowing Jesus. There's no coming back from that. Once you take your last breath, you have just been transitioned from time into eternity. There's no coming back from that. My mother-in-law don't want to come back. There's no coming back from that. All of us are going to spend eternity somewhere. But whether but your choice to either accept or reject Jesus is you choosing where you want to spend eternity. Our sins separate us from God. Our sins separate us from from spending eternity with God. The end result of our sin is spiritual death. The only way to deal with this is to be saved by faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible lets us know in Ephesians chapter 2, Therefore by grace are we saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, the Bible lets us know that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that he was raised from the dead, we shall be saved. Do you believe this morning? We provide another opportunity in case you missed it yesterday to receive Jesus as Lord of your life. I wanted to talk about what happens to people who have never heard the gospel. Because somebody would ask, what about those who have never heard the gospel? The Bible does not specifically address that, and we cannot, you know, 
make an absolute statement about it. However, since the Bible states that salvation is only through Jesus and that a person must receive Jesus as Savior in order to be saved, then we can conclude that those who have not heard may be lost. The Bible lets us know that, that in, in Romans 10, 13, 14, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? Somebody say, until all have heard. Write that down. Until all have heard. Until all have heard. Hallelujah. Until all have heard. Our responsibility while we live, ladies and gentlemen, is to ensure that those in our sphere of influence hear. Apostle Wings talked about hearing the other day. Our responsibility, our job, is to ensure that all have heard, that those in our sphere of influence hear the message of the gospel, that those in our sphere of influence hear the gospel of the kingdom. If all you do is tell somebody Jesus loves you, you have provided for that person good news. If all they hear from you is Jesus died for your sins, they have heard the good news. If all, hallelujah, if all they hear, Matthew twenty four fourteen. this is what I want to get to. But the one Matthew twenty four thirteen. But the one who perseveres to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Ladies and gentlemen, your responsibility, my responsibility, is to ensure that those in our sphere of influence hear. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. God uses us to help others hear. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach lest he be Sin. Don't just be hearers of the word, but do us also. Your job, believer, is to ensure that those in your spirit of influence that don't know Jesus, somebody say, hear. You are his hands and feet, believer. You are his mouthpiece, believer. Do those in your office know that you're saved and have you shared what you know with them? So these are some terms that are relative to our salvation but those who believe in, trust in, and rely on Jesus, those are the people who will experience eternal life. I pray that this ministered to you this morning. I pray that you're blessed by it this morning. I pray that you'll use every opportunity available to you, that you'll use that time in those, with those people in your sphere of influence to tell them about Jesus, the Jesus that you have come to know as Savior and Lord. That's all I have time for today. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Because of God's great love for us, he took action to rescue us. Our future is bright. And since God so loved the world and took action to rescue us, then we should do our part to help rescue somebody else. Pastor Gloria Moore Wright, woman of God, take us in with a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we bless you today. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you, God, for everything. We thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning with you on our mind. We give you glory. We thank you for what our ears have heard and what our heart has felt. Help us to hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Help us, God, to be effective witnesses for you, telling everybody that we come in contact with the good news of the gospel. Jesus loved you, and he died for your sins. Father, we're so grateful today. We're so grateful today, God, that you reached way down and picked us up. We're so grateful today, God, that you sent your word to heal us, 
to deliver us, to set us free, and to make us whole. We're so grateful today, God, that we're reminded of how much you love us. You cared enough to send your very best. You sacrificed your only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you today, God. We choose to be a whosoever. We choose to believe in Jesus Christ. We choose to rely on him, to have confidence in him, to trust in him, and to wait on him. Father, we give you glory today. Thank you for your mercies that are new every day. Thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us. Thank you, Lord God, for your compassions that fail not. We come today, God, repenting of all of our sins, all of our transgressions, our shortcomings, our weaknesses, asking you to have mercy on us. Forgive us, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we come believing. We come believing that Jesus is your son, the one that died on the cross for us, the one that you resurrected three days later. Father, because he got up, we can get up today. We choose to follow Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and for the privilege to come out of darkness into the marvelous light, to denounce sin and receive Jesus, to have eternal life in heaven with you and with your son Jesus rather than eternal damnation with Satan and his angels. Father, we give you praise today. We come today, God, thanking you for this, your servant, asking you, God, to replenish her. Restore all the virtue that Dr. Sellers have poured out on today. Lord God, refresh her, God, in the inner man and in the outer man, Father, in the name of Jesus. We come today, God, thanking you for this ministry, command your morning, thanking you, hallelujah, for all of the listeners, those on the call, God, those in the listening audience. Father, we thank you for equipping us to equip somebody else, for saving us to help somebody else to get saved, for delivering us to help somebody else, hallelujah, receive their deliverance. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for counting us worthy to be your disciple. You are an awesome God. You're good all the time, and all the time you are good. Thank you for how you continually bless us, going out and coming in, for how you make us ahead and not the tail, above and not the knee. Thank you for being our protection and our protector. Thank you for being Jehovah Rapha, our healer and our deliverer. You are, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, the one that rides every morning with healing in your wings, and we're grateful today. We thank you, God, for being our peace. You are Jehovah Shalom. Lord God, we pray today. For all that are bereaved, all that have lost loved ones, Father, we lift up the Stella's family and all the families all over the world, God, that are experiencing a loss. And we pray, God, for comfort. We pray, God, that you give them that peace that surpasses all understanding. Turn the mourning into dancing, God. Give them the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray for families, God that you will unite and unify, that you will make, hallelujah, families of the uh, blood families as well as spiritual families. God, make us all one, even as you and your son Jesus is one. Help us, Lord God, to walk by the same rule, to mind the same things, to keep our minds stayed on you, God, to keep our hearts fixed, Lord God, and our minds elevated. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today, God, glorifying you magnifying you and lifting you up. We come today, God, hallelujah, for making the way so plain that a fool can't err. We give you praise. We come today, Lord God, interceding for the sick, Lord God, and we speak to every man of sickness and disease. By the authority of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we claim healing and wholeness now, for your word assures us that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are already healed. Father, we thank you today. We praise you today, God, for healing spiritually as well as naturally. We give you glory. We come today, God, interceding for that one that's struggling with life, Lord God, that one, Lord God, that feel like throwing in the towel, that one that feel like giving up, that one that feel like giving out, Lord God, Help us, Lord God, to endure unto the end. For your word assures us, hallelujah, that if we endure to the end, we shall be saved. Father, we thank you today. 
thank you for salvation. Thank you for glorification. Thank you for justification. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for wiping our slate clean as if we never sinned. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for throwing our sins in the lake and remembering them no more. Thank you for washing us, for purging us, for purifying our hearts. And um, I thank you for the change, Lord God, the change of mind, the change of attitude, the change of heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And the change of destination. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for assuring our reservation in heaven. Eternal life with you, Father. We praise you and we bless you. Father, we lift up every sinner everywhere right now. Those that are in jail, those that are in prison, those that are in prison in their circumstances. And we pray, God, that you would touch their hearts and minds right now to yield to you right now, to surrender to you right now, to, hallelujah, invite you into their life right now, to denounce their past life of sin and accept Jesus as their Savior. Father, I pray that as I'm praying, they are praying, that they're opening up their mouth and they're confessing that Jesus is Lord. They are confessing, hallelujah, thank you, God, and they are acknowledging, hallelujah, that you have given them a way out a way out of sin, hallelujah, into righteousness. Father, we thank you for Jesus being Jehovah's Sikhanu, our righteousness. So it's not about us. It's about him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank you, God, for everyone that have decided to make Jesus their choice today. We rejoice with the angels in heaven. Hallelujah. And we give you glory, God. We give you honor and we give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord God, for enlarging the kingdom of God. We thank you for adding to the churches daily such as should be saved. We thank you, Lord God, for setting in order the things that are lacking in your house, Father. We praise you and we bless you. We pray for the entire body of Christ that you will help us all to be steadfast, to be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For inasmuch as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Wright. Romans ten thirteen through 14, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, rescued, rescued from judgment, from wrath. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how should they believe in him whom they have not heard? Every individual is accountable to God. It's not so much that people haven't heard about God, but many people have rejected the God that they heard about. For those who believe, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, for every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. This is why this is our theme scripture for Victorious Living Bible Institute and everything that I do that's that's named Victorious. For every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith and who can win this battle against the world, only those who believe in, trust in, rely on, cling to, only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. For those who believe, for those who have heard and received and believe, you can declare this morning, I win, I am victorious, my future is bright, and Jesus did that for me. Jesus is the way because of God's great love. He took action to rescue us. My future, your future, our future is bright. To God be the glory uh, for the things that he has done. Thank you so much for tuning in to Command Your Morning. If you desire to sow into what we're doing for the kingdom, you can visit uh, Cash App at dollar sign U-R-O-M-W or go to our website at theupperroomwaycross.com. Click on the link to give. God bless you, everybody. God keep your heaven smile upon you. Those on the call, please remain on the line. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? Come on, clap your hands. Put your hands together and tell the Lord thank you this morning. 